What's going on everybody? Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel, Let's Talk Tottenham. Today we're going to be talking about some news articles that I've noticed over the last few months and the trend that I'm seeing that I think is only going to be good news, not only for the, the club as a whole, but also on the pitch. And so uh, I'm excited to, to share some of those insights with you. Hopefully uh, you're excited about them too. Um, but yeah, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Uh, if you've been around here for a while, hit that like button, say hello in the comments. I'd love to hear from you all. Uh, what, what's your take on certain things? So let's start out by wishing the club a very happy birthday today, uh, September 5th. 1882, the club was founded, and uh, yeah, Spurs put out this this tweet, and you know this would be a great uh, background uh, if you wanted to throw that on your desktop, I think. But uh, but anyway, so happy birthday to the club. Uh, may there be many many more uh, birthdays as well. But uh, that's not really the news. The news today, I wanted to start out um, by talking about what was shared on September 1st. Um, th this uh, article came out, a club announcement about football management board restructuring. And so the club is pleased to announce the appointment of Trevor Birch as director of football operations. Trevor has extensive industry experience and has held several prominent roles within football, including having been the chairman of Swansea F City FC and CEO of Chelsea, Sheffield United, Derby County, uh, Everton and Leeds United. Trevor will focus on the development of the club's football operations. So this seems to be a pretty uh, big hire, uh, and I'm going to be looking at some articles, um, well, particularly one article from The Athletic about who Trevor is and what he brings to Spurs. But I want to keep reading because uh, I found this to be pretty interesting. As part of a wider external remit, Rebecca Capelhorn, I'm sorry if, if I'm saying these names wrong, uh, will take on the role of Director of Football Administration and Governance. This newly created role will drive and embed football governance processes, contractual matters, and best practice across the club. It will also allow time for Rebecca to extend her work with the European Club Association, the FA, and various related football and governing bodies and working groups where she represents the club. Now, this next part about Steve Hitchin is something we've known, um, but uh, I think is important as well. Steve Hitchin has been promoted to technical performance director. This new role will focus on building capabilities to support a world-class football infrastructure across senior and youth teams. As technical performance director, Steve will have responsibility for scouting, performance and recruitment analysis, and youth recruitment. These manage management changes will lead to the creation of a football board consisting of Trevor Birch, Rebecca Cablehorn, and Steve Hitchin, chaired by Daniel Levy. I think this is huge news. You know, for so long, it's just been Daniel Levy. And, and we know uh, he can be, you know, hard-nosed. And, and supposedly, uh, there's been some rumors coming out on Twitter from, from some who've had, how, how did you get this uh, early access, bruh? Uh, early access to the All or Nothing episodes uh, and where Daniel Levy will be talking about um, transfers. You'll be seeing some of the conversations that he's had with, with certain players. Um, and also, apparently, uh, Alistair Gold reported this morning that there would be even some boardroom video. So I think this is going to be great for the, the, the club uh, in terms of Having Daniel be Daniel and allowing people who are specialized, who are good at what they do, uh, add to that team. I, I think it's, even though I, I appreciate Daniel Levy and everything he's done, and, and I agreed with what he said in the first episode of, of All or Nothing, that some people don't think he's ambitious. I'm building a $1 billion uh, stadium project, uh, wanting to see the team do well. I, I know that he may not have always made the best decisions, um, in hindsight, but I do believe he's ambitious. And this is ambitious to bring these people together to create a football board. And he'll be the chair of it. And that makes sense. Uh, but let's look, in, uh, look a little into uh, Trevor, Trevor Birch. 
Uh, this is from The Athletic. It's behind a paywall, so I apologize about that, but I will leave a link in the description down below. Um, and so here's uh, what he brings. And they say he brings a human touch to Spurs. And so I just want to focus on this little section here. It says, a former professional player himself who started out in Liverpool's youth setup, Birch has forged a highly successful career in the game as an executive. Now 62, it mentions he was also Chelsea CEO when uh, Roman Abramovich bought the club in 2003, and he had the same position at Everton, Leeds, Derby County, and Sheffield United. As a chartered accountant and insolvency specialist, he has worked for a number of clubs with financial problems, including Bolton Wanderers and Portsmouth. Now, Personally, I don't think Spurs are really in that deep of financial problems. Obviously, they took out the, the loan, the large loan, to, uh, to make up for the losses they expected from this season. But it doesn't seem like we're in any uh, sort of uh, serious issues. I think we're eighth richest club in the world. Um, but uh, here's what The Athletic points out, that his Birch's uh, fiscal expertise and prominent role in facilitating the Abramovich takeover has led to speculation he has been brought on to help facilitate the eventual sale of Spurs, especially as his appointment follows that of Jonathan Turner, a specialist in mergers and acquisitions to the board in June. But others have focused on his expertise in transfer dealings and wide network of contacts as evidence of what he will bring to the club. Now, I I think this is interesting. I, I don't know, you know, Spurs are they're a huge they're well they aren't a huge but they're they're becoming a big club. It's going to be harder and harder to sell such a large club. Uh, there's no naming rights deal. Uh, you just start to wonder: Is Daniel Levy struggling with the the naming rights? Is he struggling with maybe potentially selling the club? And so he's bringing these people in. I don't really know personally. I don't think so. I think Daniel Levy loves Spurs. And to be honest, even though I I disagree with some of the things that he's done in the past, I want a chairman that loves this team. I, I don't want somebody that's just you know, yeah. Doing this game is about money instead of this game is about glory. And so, um, and I know people have accused Daniel Levy of that, but I think he's Spurs at heart. And and I hope that uh, even if this is the direction that Spurs are going in, that whoever comes in will have that same love uh, for the team. Now, this uh, article also mentions the hiring of Jonathan Turner as a non executive director. Now, this was all the way back in June. And uh, football.london, uh, you know, talks about Daniel Levy being delighted with the appointment of, of ex-government advisor at Tottenham. And Alistair Gold writes, um, they announced his appointment. He has 24 years of investment banking experience and is a Tottenham fan. Um, joins the club board with immediately immediate effect and it is his technological expertise that the club are set to tap into now i i know that the the new stadium you know is meant to be technologically advanced and as we think about you know uh the new realities of uh this this virus and you know having to figure out how to manage uh, so many fans coming into the stadium or or limited number of fans coming into the stadium there might be something here where having uh, somebody who who knows about technology pretty well who could maybe have some contact in in the uh, you know in surrounding world that might be able to help in terms of how can we get more and more fans in here safely um, and so who knows, uh, you know, Daniel keeps everything pretty close to the chest, but these hires seem to be great hires. I'm, I'm excited about having more voices speaking into Daniel Levy's ear and hopefully helping the club. So this is just looking at the director kind of role or director um, uh, tier, but that's not the only change that Tottenham has made over the last few months when it comes to um, changes in personnel. Uh, we know that our very own Ledley King joined the first team staff uh, back in August. Uh, so this was a huge uh, deal. Obviously, Ledley King does not need any sort of introduction, I'm sure, for you. Um, legend of the club. The Evening Standard, Dan Kilpatrick, wrote an article about it. And one of the things that I noted is he 
um, you know, replaces the tactical analysis, uh, an analyst. Um, and King has been handed a, here it is, wide-ranging brief working with Mourinho's coaches, analysts, and players while helping Academy Stars transition to the first team as he did himself with much success 21 years ago. Spurs insist his role is not specifically a coaching one with King yet to have completed his UEFA badges and he will spend several months gaining uh, a grounding in various aspects of working alongside Mourinho and the players before taking on a more specialist brief and this is exciting uh, i think in the um article he goes on to talk about how Jose Mourinho has a pattern of bringing in these legends to come alongside him at the different clubs that he's worked at and it's so good i i, I don't blame him for it uh, who doesn't love ledley and to have him in and around the club in and around the players speaking into the heart of of what we want to see from especially our young players you can see in this picture he's talking to Troy Parrott and it looks like the the back of the head of Skippy um, and and you want that that energy that passion that drive that experience to tell them how to get to the next level making the first team I, I think these are great appointments and then lastly uh, as we we know back uh, in August there was a large Academy coaching update and restructuring and and so uh the biggest one of these was the appointment of chris powell to the academy coaching staff uh, he was a, a highly respected former player coach and manager with a wealth of experience in the premier league and football league chris joins us as head of coaching under 17 to under 23. he will work closely with our former academy graduate and first team player ryan mason who steps up from his previous role as the U19s coach to become the head of player development from under 17 to under 19. And it has a list of all the different people here. Um, but obviously this is, uh, there was a huge hole that was left in, in the, the youth development. And so we had to fill that hole and spread that out, I think among, uh, among more players and, or uh, coaches. And so, like I said, I think you see a lot of restructuring in the coaches. You see a lot of restructuring in the, the board and the directors. And hopefully this will start to show up on the pitch. Um, again, uh, this is building out a, a much larger process. It's not, you know, we're not Chelsea out here spending $250 million on players to just throw on the pitch. We, we are a different kind of club. We're, we're, we're run in a different way. And so, um, and I like the way that we, we run these things. You know, um, personally, I, I feel like all that, that money just being thrown around, I understand it. But, you know, I, I'm someone who lives in the States and we have, uh, you know, the NHL, the NFL, the NBA, all that stuff. And you've got these... Um, you know, I'm a Red Wings fan. I uh, grew up uh, in Metro Detroit. Back in the day when the Red Wings were didn't have a salary cap. And, you know, I remember we, we would just go out and buy veterans that could, yeah, just do well as soon as they came in. And the, the draft picks, you know, were, were different. It, it didn't maybe mean as much. Where now you can see that the leagues have really capped the salaries, which might actually be helpful uh, for the Premier League, but um, but then they do this draft, and and what you start to see is there's you know teams will tank their seasons to get those highest draft picks, and um, yeah, now they change it to kind of a lottery system. And the Wings this year they they have the worst um, yeah just the uh, the worst record. And you would hope, you know, they had the best lottery chance to win the first round draft pick. They didn't win it. Somebody with 40 points more won the draft pick. And you're like, man, it's just so frustrating when you're trying to get, get better. And so I, I, I kind of liken that to this because it doesn't feel earned when a club like Newcastle is being talked about getting these super rich owners who are just going to inject money. It's You're not earning it. You're not growing. You're not being smart you're just throwing cash and maybe some people want that for spurs but um personally I, I like the way that we're doing it i i like that we're fiscally responsible that we're not dependent on an owner that if if an owner you know 
left that we would be lost. Um, so anyway, I like all these different appointments. I like the, the direction that we're going. I like what we're seeing. It gives me a lot of hope uh, for, for coming seasons. I know obviously it's not gonna maybe directly affect this upcoming season that starts very, very soon. But it, it does give me hope for us uh, um, successive seasons that we're gonna start to see a change. And, and hopefully, you know, if they are here to help facilitate a sale, that would be awesome. I made a joke uh, that, the, you know, what if the bonus episode was uh, the sale of Spurs to Jeff Bezos? And obviously, uh, that's a joke. I don't think that's going to happen. But we would trade one bald man for another bald man. And, and uh, you know, maybe it would be Amazon Stadium. Who knows? But um, I don't think that's going to happen. But we sure uh, put, on, uh, put out our resume uh, by having them in every aspect of the stadium. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to show that to you. What do you think? Do you think this is good for the club? Do you think this is a waste of, 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 of uh, maybe my time to, to even talk about? Or do you think this is, um, yeah, a waste of, of funds, you know, in terms of, of what we're doing right now? We're, we're spending money on board and directors and things like that instead of spending money on players. So maybe this is the wrong way to go. Let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, if you're interested by this, please hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. And as ever, it was great talking with you.